CataractCoach.com. Look at that. That's an anterior chamber maintainer. Now, this is an anonymous resident from Europe who's doing the cataract surgery. Of course, the video is sped up, so we don't have to spend too much time on the easy steps. The caps rex is being made with just a cystotome through a paracentesis. Now, a little higher dissection of the lens nucleus. Now, the anterior chamber keeps, of course, the anterior chamber maintained. It's an infusion line, so it creates an inflow pressure. There's the main incision being created going inside the eye. So a lot of effort there, and that incision is a little bit too much in the clear cornea. So that incision is not nicking the limbal vessels, which is something we like to do. Faco probe going in the eye, cleaning up a little of the anterior cortex, and an attempt's gonna be made here to remove this nucleus. So chopper going in the eye as well. Looks like we're grooving a central trench here. Now the anterior chamber maintainer does make life a lot easier because it keeps the AC pressurized at all times. So even if there's distortion of the incision, even if there's leakage of extra fluid from the incision, that'll help maintain the AC. So again, a central groove is being created. The pupil is becoming a little bit meiotic at this point. One helpful thing you can do is to put epinephrine in the infusion line, and that can often help to keep the pupil a little bit more dilated. So grooving a central trench here with the phaco probe, looks like a very good technique. You can tell the surgeon's sitting superiorly, and the surgeon's doing a very good job of keeping the eye in primary. There's the nucleus being rotated, and that looks good, and continuing with this central groove. Now, though most of my videos, you'll see me doing just a quick chop at the beginning of the case. I very rarely do this kind of uh, grooving in the middle. The one advantage to doing the grooving here is it actually debulks the central endonucleus. So the most dense part of the nucleus is going to be debulked here. And that does help, especially if we have a little smaller rexus or a smaller pupil. So we can see we got a partial crack of the nucleus into two halves. A little rotation going on here. And we'll split the nucleus a little bit more. That looks good. Now remember, you have to fully separate the pieces. If there's some small attachment, that will make it a little more challenging to bring a piece up into the iris plane. Now the surgeon's doing a good job there of holding the nucleus and going around the, the nucleus equator to chop and there's a little piece that's coming out. This is a very good technique. This is a stop and chop technique. So grooving down the middle, creating two halves, cracking them apart, and then sub-chopping each half. So there's the nuclear half, aminucleus piece, and then the chopper around it, and it can be aspirated down once chopped. This is a tough case. This is not an easy one because look how small the pupil is. The nucleus has a good amount of density as well. And so certainly the challenge is here. This resident is doing a really good job. This is excellent. We definitely give this doctor a very high grade here. So one more thing to keep in mind is, again, we're speeding up the video so it's going faster than normal speed. It's not real time. It's probably double real time. But one important thing here is the surgeon takes time to be careful at every step. When you're learning, don't look at the clock. It doesn't matter if the surgery is an extra one or two or even an extra 10 minutes. What matters is having control during the procedure and doing a safe procedure for the patient. A few minutes one way or the other is not going to make a difference. So very important at the beginning in your first 500 or first thousand cases, don't worry about speed. That's not the, the focus. Worry about efficiency and control. So about half of the nucleus has been removed from the eye. Now let's see what's happening now. A chopper is being placed inside. Now maybe the AC maintainer's off at this point. Ah, oh, there's viscoelastic going in. So very important to get enough viscoelastic inside the eye. Sometimes the anterior chamber maintainer can also push away your viscoelastic, so you have to be careful there, especially if it's aimed towards the endothelium. So this anterior chamber maintainer has those grooves on the tip so that when you make a small incision, it's able to 
hold itself in position. So one hemineucleus is remaining. It's rotated around, buzzing in with the phaco probe, chop around the equator. That's a pretty good attempt. It didn't work because we lost vacuum. Here, my advice would be, let's show more metal on the phaco tip. That's a pretty good chop, I'll take that. If we have more metal on the phaco chip tip, it allows us to embed the phaco probe deeper into the nuclear piece. And that means a tighter hold, more vacuum, easier to chop. When there's so little of the, the phaco tip showing, you can only embed it in the nucleus very little, less than a millimeter. And that makes it difficult to hold the pieces with high vacuum. So remember, you won't be able to embed further than where the silicone sleeve is. So one good take home message for this young surgeon who's learning, show a little more metal on the phaco tip, adjust that. We have on cataract coach here a previous video showing exactly how to adjust the phaco tip and IA tip to get maximum performance. In general, you want a little bit more than this one millimeter here. That show. This is probably even half a millimeter. I think one to one and a half millimeters is about ideal. So buzzing into the nucleus a little bit more. That looks great. Another sub chop. And then we'll remove these pieces. Again, you look at the meiosis here. The pupil is coming down. Very important to stay in the center of the pupil like this surgeon is doing. That's really good. Great use of the left hand in order to get the pieces in front of the phaco probe. There, see how we're pushing the pieces forwards. Important that you don't allow the pieces to sit under the phaco probe. You want them in front of the phaco probe. So last couple pieces here. At this point, I really don't think much more phaco chopping is needed. So you don't, the chopper can now just be used to push the piece in front of the probe. And so we can just aspirate it down with a little bit of ultrasound power. Now one thing that is very helpful when you do an anterior chair maintainer is there's no surge because you really have a lot of inflow. Remember, when you're watching this video, there are two sources of fluid inflow. That from the phaco sleeve on the side ports as well as the AC maintainer. And that balances very nicely any outflow. And the outflow, of course, is leakage from the incision, is the minor one. And the major one is the flow down the barrel, uh, down the mouth of the phaco needle. There's the last piece coming up at the iris plane. A little bit of a manipulation with the chopper and putting a little bit more energy to remove these pieces. In most of my videos, I do use the chopper then in a safe mode to help prevent the posterior capsule from coming forward. Here in this situation with the anterior chamber maintainer, it's much less of a risk. So taking our time here, and we're gonna finish up the last bit of the lens material. This is excellent, this is a very difficult case. Look at the configuration of the iris, the small pupil, a little bit of prolapse there towards the paracentesis. Now just using an aspiration device through the paracentesis. Again, you don't need the irrigation aspiration because the inflow is already coming from the AC maintainer. So you just need an aspiration device. That makes it, of course, a lot simpler. Cleaning up everything here. That looks great. And now time for IOL insertion. You can, like I normally do, fill the capsule bag with viscoelastic. That makes it very easy to insert the IOL. But certainly viscoelastic's not inexpensive. There's a cost to it. So in some situations like this, you can just use an anterior chamber maintainer to keep the eye inflated as you put in the IOL, which is what we're doing right there. So the lens looks good going in the capsule bag. Now dialing in that last haptic. And here I'd recommend using that second instrument to lift up the iris to ensure that the caps or bag is overlapping the optic for 360. You don't want to have one haptic stuck in the sulcus. That caused some issues. So overall, our assessment here is an excellent job. This resident, who is anonymous, has done a beautiful case and has used an anterior chamber maintainer. Thanks for watching.